And we're live. Hi, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning from Pinhole Quilting. Uh, this is our Pershaw showroom. And today we've got a little bit of a different angle on everything. We're not standing up today. I'm taking a more relaxed approach to life, um, which of course Pete and I do on a regular basis. Um, but actually, recently, we've been really, really busy, which is lovely. And um, we've been seeing lots of customers installing new machines, um, getting machines back from customers, putting stand-ups in and all that kind of stuff. So um, if you've had our email newsletter recently, you'll see there's some second news. There's simply 16s on there. I'll talk about that in uh, just a moment. But I just wanted to say welcome. And I hope that you're not having quite as much rain as we are. Wherever in the world you are, I hope that you are having good weather. Um, so the normal, apparently, the normal service was resumed last week with Spain having better weather than the UK. Um, and of course, now people can travel to Portugal. I was supposed to be going to Portugal last May with my friend Penny and um, we were going to go to Porto. And of course it had to be canceled. She was flying in from um, Cayman where she lives, where I, that's how I know her when I lived out there. We, uh, we, become, we became very, very good friends and we'd got this walking trip arranged. So we're going to have a day or two in Porto. Then we're going on a three day walking trip, including uh, staying with a, having dinner with a count who has a vineyard in Portugal. Uh, which sounded very exciting. The whole thing was cancelled and hopefully we'll be able to do it in 2022. So whatever your arrangements for holidays or days away this year, um, don't forget we're now open for workshops. I know it's not quite having dinner with a count, but you know, you will learn about long arm quilting, which I'm sure he can't do. Um, so the whole thing about our workshops really is that the bookings are now open for June. Um, there's lots of dates there. So if you've had a machine and you haven't done your foundation, which is part of your package, then do book up for the June classes. There's some availability still. Um, for those of you who did the virtual classroom, you've got the Foundation Plus again. There's dates for that. Um, and if you've already done both of those and you just want to do some more, um, perhaps get back into it or just have a away day, away day here at Pinol Quilting, then Feathers, uh, Runa's Feathers and Fills is our class where we go into more depth building on the Foundation Workshops. So who have we got on today, Pete? We have got first in line. Who do you think is first in line? Val Brooks. Val Brooks, almost <laughs> always first in line. You must be hovering, Val. Hovering. Second, second is an early starter who's al almost always... Esperance. No, this nope, is Pat. Patricia. Patricia, Patricia from the in the Adirondacks. In the Adirondacks. We've got Jane Morley, Janet Bevan. Trisha's with us. Oh, great. Trisha. Uh, Avril in Northern Ireland. Fantastic. Jacqueline Bertho. Avril, who's got the suite. Yep. Uh, which one? Which We've got two Avrils in Northern Ireland. Avril Farmer. Okay. Oh, hi, Avril. Hi. And uh, Lindy. I was with Lindy yesterday installing her new Amara. I yeah. I haven't posted those pictures yet, Lindy, but you're going to do great with that machine. Yeah, beautiful we've machine. We've got Jenny Humphrey with her Fantastic. Moxie. Rosemary. Yeah. Rosemary Mantis. Oh, Rosemary. Yes. I'll talk about your book, not this week, but Rosemary, because I've just got the information, but we'll talk about your book, which is very exciting. Sue Nelson, Derek, morning, Derek, Elaine Tadner, lots and lots of people. Who Derek, good morning, Derek. Good to have you over here on our little Facebook Live. Yep. And yeah, We're looking forward to seeing Derek and Sandra in, or in July, August. Fingers it's actually, crossed. It's actually, it's actually dry in Drogheda. In Ireland. Wow. So that would be Anne Colburn. Yes. Perfect day for quilting, as Caroline <laughs> rightly says. Yes. Damn. Yeah. I'm not unhappy about the weather. I mean, Pete, because he's half Italian, does struggle a little bit with this sort of wet stuff. Well, I'm indoors with um, fully clothed and I've still got my coat on. And a hoodie. Yes. Yeah. Which he and was wearing a moment ago. I've got my merino wool underlayers. So we've got Jean... From Canada. It's rubbish, oh, isn't it? This morning. weather's rubbish. Morning, Jenny. Oh, Barbara. Jean from Canada. Yes, 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 yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. Anyway, it's difficult to see on the phone here, but we've got it lots is. of people with us. Yes. So I could do this. Oh, I just need to turn that off, though. Yeah, that's good. Brilliant. Uh, great. I can see myself. I can see. I can see myself. And Laurence from Le Touquet. Morning. Oh, Laurence. bonjour, Laurence. I loved, um, I loved going over to see Lawrence. I've mentioned it before, but you know, that was my last, that was my last trip. And, and it was just so cool because I went all the way by, Pete, you dropped me off at Pershaw Station, didn't you? Yep. 
Pershaw Station, um, and uh, who, uh, John Betjeman wrote about Pershaw Station in his um, his poem about going to, I don't know where he's, he's going, going to. to see, I think he's going to see his uh, wife and oh. girlfriend in Hereford. I oh, think. yes, it was. Maybe think, girlfriend. I think maybe girlfriend. Um, in Hereford. And uh, it was a very good poem, but um, obviously not so much for his wife. But um, yeah, so I went from Pershaw down to London and then got the Eurostar over. And um, and that was really great. And then Laurence picked me up at the station at, um, Le, well, was it Calais, uh, Le Touquet, somewhere like that. And um, and then we had a, yeah, we had a great time doing um, Laurence's uh, Infinity with Pro Stitcher. It was an upgrade of the Pro Stitcher. And then on the way back, I, I think I just read through the entire Pro Stitcher designer manual, which is um, definitely one that you can read quite quickly. So what are we going to do today? You are no doubt curious as to what is on my table today. Aside from the fact that we've also, good news this week, got proper coffee back. Coffee machine. I know it's taken me months, but, you know, we've been busy. And uh, I've now got, we've now got proper coffee. Proper, oh. proper John's with us this morning. John Cole Morgan. Morning, John. Oh, good morning, John. Love that star. What star? Oh, this. Oh, that star, yes. Pete didn't, yeah, he's not even really looked at it. I just did it. Just did it, like, last in the last hour. So this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about Cindy Needham stencils. We're going to be talking about Cindy Needham stencils. We're going to talk about Glide Thread, 40 weight and 60 weight. We're going to talk about ruler work. We're going to talk about settings. And so there's a little bit for everybody because Cindy Needham stencils, that's good for whether you're a sit-down quilter, stationary, i.e. you're moving the quilt, not the machine, or whether you're a stand-up, movable, long-arm quilter. Either way, Cindy Needham's got some very, very good stencils that are going to work very well, well for you marking out your quilt, should you wish to do so. And we can either use, um, with Cindy stencils, we can either use the quilt pounce that we were using in the last few weeks. We've been using these with the new full-line stencils. But we also... Um, We've got our Bohen um, fine chalk marker, and we've got percentages off. The, haven't done percentage off that yet, but we'll do that, won't we? Yeah. So we're going to have 10% off this, this, and all the Cindy stencils. And the good news is, is that we we got a lot of um, stencils in, including the new oval stencil from Cindy in the last month or so, because um, Cindy we had a little chat, and because of the different regulations regarding treatment of VAT from overseas, we're now stocking all of Cindy's stencils in good numbers, and she's directing people in the UK to us. And I think our pricing is pretty reasonable when you take into account shipping. So. That is what we're going to cover. So let's just discuss a bit about what I've done here. I have done, while in the last hour I was sewing this out, I did a little video and a little time lapse. That's going to go on our YouTube channel along with this Facebook Live later. So you'll be able to see what my settings were, etc. But let's just talk through how I did this. Let me just, I'm going to grab the stencil. You can see where you are, Pete. So the ultimate marking stencil by Cindy Needham is probably, if you've not been introduced to Cindy Needham stencils previously, then I would say that's your starting point, the ultimate stencil. It comprises two stencils and two of these sheets that enable you to do design work. So I've actually got permanently, I think, I've, I've tried to get this off, but it won't come off. So this is like an acetate overlay. Thank you, Pete. Yeah, acetate overlay, so you One can probably see it better. Design. Yes, against like that. the white is better. Yeah. yeah. So you can use your dry erase or wet erase on here. Don't use your permanent marker like on this one. Um, and this is very, very useful for planning a design. So you use these references of the lines that go into the center and the circular lines to actually plan your design. Check that's good. And then when it comes to actually marking it on your quilt top, you just put your fine marker through these points. So you can actually just put it through the points. Always mark the center. I would suggest, I mean, anybody who's a quilter probably knows how to mark the center of their block, but folding it in half, marking the center, and then making sure that you've put that cross right at the start of your design because it happens you know it becomes misaligned and it's much quicker if you've got that cross in the center for alignment so with this one you can you can mark this using either this one actually i think the circle works as well um, so you lay it over your block your quilt block 
and you just mark the points that you're going to so I would have marked this yeah and this and this one etc and then you get your ruler and you join up those marks and then and this is what the video is about you start in your center and you go out on that line with the ruler and then to the edge and then come back on the final one you just do a single line so this is my last one I can see it's just got a single line so I went out and then I just came all the way around the edge so that gives me my structure into which I can then do my quilting um, so that's a very very good stencil to start with and one of the lovely things about Cindy's stencils is you don't just get the stencil you get also her fabulous template books which she will email to you as a PDF it started to really heavily rain so I hope that everybody can hear us this is the ultimate stencil handbook she revises this pretty much every year she actually kind of incorporates new designs and this is the 2020 revision so you get this you just email her she puts the email address that you've got to request the PDF when you get your product and she says just email me and literally within within 24 hours probably half an hour most of the time she will send you back this and this shows you how to use the templates and as she says here please email me if you have any questions at all I'm always here to help she's incredibly helpful um, she's also got YouTube videos and if you go to her website you can find the links quiltingcreations.com is her website and this is really just starting through and showing how a bit like the one I've done here how you do the base stencil and marking and then how you kind of you can create some subsidiary designs and how you do the how you can fill in some extra space so that would be like a mariner's compass type thing um, anyway that's all of the information that you get with the product it's not extra this is all included so there's a lovely mariner's compass and it's yeah, it is as she says there it's classy and ele elegant and you can do so much with these so in this one for example Cindy has used some of her other templates she has these fabulous background templates of like the mini clamshells but she's done it with ruler work and then she's filled in feathers on the outside so it's some lovely examples and if you go on Pinterest and you look for Cindy Needham, you will find a ton of designs on there as well. So I'm sure that people who've been using these um, will have good things to say about it. And Cindy did come over in 20, 2019, wasn't it? 2018. 2018. 2018. 2018. Um, and that was lovely, actually, because um, I hadn't met Cindy before. We just had all this correspondence over the years. So that's the ultimate. That's the one I would recommend starting with. And when you've done your base design, as she shows you in that PDF, you then can do your filler. So with this, for example, what I would do with this is now fill in some feathers. So starting down here for each side, I would fill in my initial little teardrop and then I'm going to just do this. Now, this is going to help me for two reasons. First of all, it gives me something I can follow, but also it puts in my head that muscle memory that everybody's always talking about. And it means that when it comes to actually quilting it, you're going to find it so much easier. So Jan Bevan says that the stencils are so useful and she's been using them all week. There you go. Thank you, Jan. And Sylvia says that she loves Cindy's work and is a brilliant teacher. She is a brilliant teacher and she's a super nice person. So I would just do this whole thing. I would literally go around each one and just create that muscle memory. And I mean, you are trying to sort of do a mirror image. And sometimes it's easier if you do, let me just do this one. If you do this one, it's a bit weird angle. So it's sort of catching a bit here, but you can then do the other side so that you actually stay more as a mirror image. If you do one side and then the other, you sort of lose that mirror. And you can decide, are you an elegant feather? Are you a, now somebody did say, I can't remember, what, I think it was Trisha, a fulsome. I think she used the word fulsome. Fulsome no, feather. Fulsome feather. See, that was rubbish. 
but you've got a little eraser at the other end and we can just do that and the reason it was rubbish is because I am using the pen in a very awkward way pencil so this is the 9.9 millimeter chalk pencil made by Bowen it's actually a com um, combination of chalk with apparently a bit of ceramic and that makes it very very nice and smooth for marking on particularly dark fabrics. Now, if you are using light fabrics, we've got a lovely selection of, of different markers. I've actually got a few extras in this week. I haven't told Pete yet, but um, uh, we, we will be putting those up on the website. Because <laughs> I saw them and I thought, actually, after the marking uh, thing we did on the virtual classroom, and Abigail was running that, I thought, actually, we could do with really getting those ones in. So there we go. So, so I do that all over, mm -hmm. then we're gonna quilt it. Here is that's a problem hearing us. Hopefully, and nobody else has reported that, so hopefully everybody else can hear us. And uh, Trisha says, no, not fulsome feathers, but ebullient feathers. Ebullient. <laughs> ebullient. Thank you, Trisha. <laughs> ebullient feathers. How fabulous is that? So let me just talk a little bit about what's the sit-down machine I'm sitting at right now. I've got three set up. I am a very lucky person and I'm going to just talk with you about some of the tools that can help you when you're doing a sit down. Now this, some of these are appropriate for both long arm sit down quilters, but also if you're a machine quilter on a domestic, I will just talk up a bit and yeah, hopefully no, it's probably... Derek, Derek and Helen have both said the Sam is okay with them, so maybe it's a setting okay. on Vera's computer or something. Could be, could be your computer, okay, Vera. Um, you. Thank you very much for that, folks. So let's just talk about a few of the machine quilting tools that we can use. Now, these are the little sweet spots. These are handy quilter sweet spots. They have like this little velour on the back. I'm gonna say velour, but actually I don't know what it is, but it's, it's got a nice grab to the fabrics, which means that you can just literally lay your hands on top of these. You don't, you know, there's no gloves to take on or off. Just put your hands on top and away you go. Now, I like these particularly for the, for the domestic machine quilters because they're nice and compact. If you've got a long arm like a Sweet 16 or the Capri, then the paddles are very, very good. And they can, they sort of form a nice space that you're going to be quilting within. And the lovely thing about these is I think it's easier to kind of get that, oh, who was it? It was, I think it was Trisha. Um, we, I think we talked about the, the George Clooney, Helen Godden and her tip about getting everything so that you're moving your hands together. Um, she said, imagine that you're putting a suntan lotion on George Clooney's back. So for those of you who are George <laughs> Clooney fans, that will forever be that's, in your memory. That's certainly not what I think about. No, no, no hopefully not. <laughs> so George Clooney's back and we're getting that factor 30 on there so that George doesn't get any nasty sunburning. At the moment, he'd just get rust i think actually but um because we've had so much rain here so those are the paddles they have they do come with like little knobs and the knobs go in these little screw holes personally i don't use the knobs i just use the paddles rest my hands on top and move them and the other one i know there's other types of gloves um that you can get but these ones are still lovely gloves to use if you just want to use gloves and you can put your hands on there and just it's got enough tension because they've got like rubberized tips i think that's most people for just said. That's oh yes that's, that's right it's like this is my potential marcel marcel more so my moment so, um Bella, i these, should never have gone into acting these are products really for the sit down machines not for any of the stand up machines that's right so for sit down people, those are options for your quilting. For stand up, we're just really talking about the Cindy Needham sensors and marking in today's session that's relevant to you. And, uh, so Claire says for her it's Hugh Jackman's back. Oh yes, oh yes. I've only recently discovered Hugh Jackman, but that's because Pete and I don't go to many films. Um, probably because there's people like Hugh Jackman on them. Yeah. Right, so. This is a Sweet 16. It's one of our more recent ones. It's got all of the latest updates, etc., on it. And I've teamed it up with True Stitch. So let's just talk about stitch regulation. You don't have to have stitch regulation on a sit down machine. You can just go for it and just do manual mode. But if you're looking for stitch regulation, um, there are two options. We've got the True Stitch, which uses a little hockey puck or the dongle. 
and it has the option of a magnet but also a retainer for doing the borders or the edges of your quilt and we can attach that to the edge of a quilt. It has a receiver which is Bluetooth to the dongle and that plugs into our machine and what it's doing is as I move this fairly close to the needle so that what I do here that is also doing when I put my foot on the foot pedal, it just activates the true stitch. Key thing here that I know that when I was doing the teaching with, with uh, Trisha, that she hadn't, what was it Trisha? I can't remember, it was somebody this week who said that they hadn't picked up the fact that the activation of either the insight or the true stitch is not, it doesn't determine how fast you go in any respect. It's an on off switch. I could have my foot flat down on that foot pedal it would not make any difference to what happens because it's this and the settings that I've got on my screen which make all the difference. So I can also not just use my foot pedal but I can use the play button on my screen. So I have got a setting here which I use for the ruler work and I can just show you the ruler work actually because I can do it up the side here. I'll just do like a equivalent of a stay stitch up the side. Uh, jump. Right, this is a ruler that I'm going to use. This is the uh, mini scallop ruler. Mini scallop has nice ears on the side, which are very useful for alignment. And it's also got this nice little wiggly line, which is great for creating texture on your quilts. So if I just show you how I would do this. I've got my, I've got my sure foot on. Um, for anybody who both stand up and sit down quilters, the deeper profile foot I take off the normal foot and I put on the sure foot. Once I put on my sure foot, I am pretty much ready to go once I've checked my settings. So settings. Settings on a sweet 16 are both stitches per inch and also a cruise percentage. What's cruise? Cruise is when you pause, it will sew up whatever the cruise percentage is. So this is an 1800 stitches per minute machine, sweet 16. And I've put the cruise at 5%. So that's 90 stitches per minute. So basically, it just means it's going to come out nicely out of the work when I'm not moving the, the uh, fabric. So if I just give a quick demo, I'm going to do needle down, needle up. 11 stitches per inch, cruise at 5%. This is what it looks like. Securing stitches. I'm going to put my ruler at the side here. I've got my dongle under here and I'm going to put my quilt top so that it is not hanging down the front here. What I normally do is I just fold it under and I would also have the needle stopping in the down position so when I stop sewing it's going to do that and what I'll do now is just put my foot on the foot pedal. You see how it's coming up? I'm not moving it. There we go. That's my five percent. But then as I move the machine, it's keeping pace. And there's my 11 stitches per inch. So that's my stitch regulation for ruler work. And that's what I used on here, out and back, out and back. With this um, mini scallop then, the little ears, I can put that dashed line on top of that and just keep the foot against the ruler. And that enables me to keep a straight line. Oops. Yeah, so Apart from the fact that yeah, I did wobble off because I was moving around. But there we go. Help yep, and you can just do that each time. And needle up, okay, and then I can finish off that section. So that's how I did the ruler work. Now let's just have a little change of scene, and we will do a bit of free motion, slightly different setting. I've got a few different options for how I would do my free motion on these feathers. I, because this is a big-ish piece, I say big-ish, it's um, the 44 inch wide piece. Oh, and this is some I did previously that some of you will have seen with some of the other ruler work. So that's done on the Sweet 16 as well. It is. Right, so I'm going to do this direction here. So I'm just gonna just fill this one in. So with my chalk pencil, I'm going to do 
What was Trisha's? These are not... Ebullient. Ebullient. It was ebullient, wasn't it? I have to remember that word. It's a great word. <clears throat> These won't be what I sew. These will be close to what I sew, but I don't really mind if they're not bang on because more important is that I'm happy with my feathers on the end result. And I've got in my muscle memory about the start and how I'm going to do all of that. So, so what are you doing on settings? Then? Settings then, I'm going to increase the cruise. Instead of 5%, I'm going to go up to 12, okay? So between 10 and 15% so that it feels a little bit more flowing and I'm going to go to 12 stitches per inch. Um, now, this is just, this is like a bit of a test piece. So I'm planning on doing half of this with that setting and half at a different setting um, because this is one that um, I will be getting um, somebody else to bind, <laughs> hopefully. So if I pull that up, I've just done my uh, pulling up the bobbin thread. Oh, and good, the, wet, the rain is stopping. I'm just, now I've done my securing three stitches and away I go. Here's my true stitch. I can either put the magnet on, I can put my hand on it, or I can just put my hands down here and just go for it. But the other thing I can do, which I think I'm gonna to prefer to do, is I'm gonna use the sweet spots, because I like these. I noticed that Sally said that she uses both gloves and the um, oh, yeah. paddles at the same time. Right. It's a, it's a new one. Maybe yeah, no, that's you, I have done that. I guess it helps you just grip the paddles a little bit better. Well, also, it just means that you're ready then to move the fabric when you're not doing the quilting. And I think a lot of us, you know, we get problems with our thumbs and a bit of arthritis and stuff over time. And actually, anything that we can do that means that we don't put too much strain on hands and fingers is, is a good thing, basically. As a result of um, aging. Aging and wearing stuff out. Right, I'm going to go ebullient there. Next one. Now I would say that because I've got the ruler foot on, my visibility is not quite as good as it should be, but I wanted to show you the ruler work. Um, so I would probably at this point have taken off, if I was doing this for my own work, I would have taken off that sure foot and put either the open toe foot on, micro foot, something like that instead. But I've only just thought about that because I just realized I couldn't see where I'm going as well as I should be able to. There we go, and one more. It's just doing the backtracking that if you don't have a very clear vision, there are certain angles that it makes it very hard. It's coming down the stem, actually, that's the biggest problem. And one more, down into here. Also, by the time you've done this a few times, you will find it a lot easier. Oh, one thing to think about, when you're doing this, you don't have to go all the way to the edge and you might actually prefer not to. And the reason being is that if we don't go all the way to the edge, like we do it more like this, we can do filler and knock that back and it just pops the feathers. So do try that because that actually works really well. Uh, where was I? So that's equally true for doing this type of thing on a standard machine as well. Yes, it is. That's absolutely right. Right, one little one at the top. And one more on that side, and then I'm gonna stop it there. I have the option of coming back down. If I want my stem to really stand out, or if I wanted to do for each of these feathers, if I wanted to do that little, nice little effect that you can get where we do like a little 
stem on each feather, then that also looks good. And it depends on whether you, you know, what your contrast is of your thread and the thickness of the thread, whether that effect is what you're looking for. Um, always test, don't guess. Yep. And so to answer a question that's just come in, this is uh, standard 40 weight glide thread that it this is. is using here. Exactly. So that's true stitch on a sweet 16 with the settings of 12 stitches per inch and crews of 12%. So now I'm going to go around and we're going to go and have a look at some more stencils. Take my pounce and, oh, I need to finish this off. Sorry, Pete. So finishing off your stitches, two or three securing stitches. Pull the thread from the cone so it doesn't disturb your nice feathers. And then you can cut it off level with the quilt. There we go. So put that back. When we're not using the True Stitch dongle, it comes with the USB charger that runs off the unit. And we can plug that in the side, like so, and that will just charge it up. You don't have to have the lead attached. It's better not to, because if you should sew over the USB lead, that would be bad. So. I did see a comment earlier from somebody who said they were interested in the Sweet 16. We do have them in stock and we do actually have a second user machine coming up uh, soon. Yep. But there are other people already interested in that. So as we've said before regarding second user machines, if you want to go second user, then email us so that we know of your interest in advance. Mm. Because sometimes they sell even without us having to advertise them because we have a list of people who are interested. Yeah. Exactly. So let's just review where we are so far. So that was the ultimate stencil that was using Glide 40. I brought it over to the Capri, which is an 18 inch long arm from Handy Quilter. This is a completely stitch regulated, if you wish. Do you want me to put, move that in there? If you don't uh, want it to fall over, yes. <laughs> well, it could make a more spectacular shot. Um, I'd need to flip the camera around, I think, at that point. The, the 18 inch Capri then, um, it came out actually just before um, we went into lockdown last year. So really very few people have actually seen this other than those like Trisha who just had hers and one of the ladies I saw last uh, yesterday um, down in Gloucester who's got the Capri. And the Capri has was the first one to come with this inbuilt Insight table. But the Insight table is also now available for Sweet 16 quilters and that's what I've got on that machine there. So the Capri, 18 inches of throat space, beautiful amount of space, even for your biggest quilt. It's got the stitch regulation built in, so we've got two magic eyes built in to the table, and the Sweet 16 and the Capri have slightly different shaped uh, custom inserts. Uh, we can't get this for the Faf. So if you've got a Faf power quilter, like the one that I've got over there, unfortunately we can't get an insert for that. It's just the Sweet and the Capri. Now we can switch between manual mode and regulated mode on this, just like we could on the Sweet 16 with True Stitch. Let's just run through some of the other Cindy Needham stencils that we've also got on 10% discount this week. Um, actually, it's this week and next till the 5th of June. So we've got the Ultimate Shape. The Ultimate Shape, very, very handy, it comes in three different sizes. Um, have we got all three sizes? It comes in four different sizes. Um, Yes, four different, <laughs> four different sizes. The, um, the thing about stencils is quite often they have like a rougher side or a smooth side. So we always put the rough side up so it grabs the pounce chalk. So there's the four sizes. And you're probably thinking, so what do I do with those? Well, they, they form a really great base for standard blocks. Now you imagine that when you've got this, and this is the quickest way to get the shape onto your quilt or use the blue water erasable or pink water erasable pens that you can get. And then you can fill in on your shape. So there's four different sizes. So that's two inch, four inch, yeah. six inch, and eight inch, five inch. Five. Yeah. And then have I got the shape in here? I should have checked that first. So Sheena's quilting feathers on her Sweet 16 whilst listening to you on oh, her Oh, how, how lovely is that? Hi, Sheena. Uh, 
okay for some reason i don't have the shape one in here okay there is one um but with this i mean imagine i wanted to do feathers in here i could i could just go up here in fact there are some examples where she and cindy had done that and you could just re keep going around so you just have like a feather something um and you could do like this kind of thing Yep, or whatever you fancy, etc. Um, so lots you can do with that. Um, have a look at our website. There's some more examples on the website. And so Claire, that's the shape. Claire, yes. And with any of the stencils, um, what comes with them is a little note that says, email Cindy directly on a particular email address and she will email yep. you a PDF um, book with all of her design guidance in it. So, yes. I mean, you can do very simple things, but the point is, is that with very little marking, you actually end up with very, very consistent and repetitive designs. And you could knock this back. You could echo it. It's looking, etc. So, it, lots of things that you can do with that one, with the shape. The ovals is the latest one that Cindy came out with. Um, so you get a fat one and a thin one. I have got the print out here. Very similar to how we would use the ultimate stencil, but there's, isn't that beautiful? Love that. Oh, that's a nice example. It is. Yeah, so, you know, circles and square designs are taken care of the ultimate, but this is the oval. And you can see there's an example of the thin one. So there's a thin one and a fat one. And you can you need to center it, so you know how to center it now. And there's a lovely example with the vintage where she's done the cross hatching and then traditional feathers all the way around on top of a vintage block with embroidery. Looks like cruel work or something. Um, how to enlarge it, how you draft a mariner's compass. A little bit more tricky on the oval, as she says. Uh, so all of these instructions um, come with the with the stencil, you just need to email yeah. Cindy to get it. So it's not a hard copy book, it'll be a PDF. PDF, yep. Out out exactly. And here's the stencils themselves. So one of each of those. So again, we, we mark our center. And then we can mark every two of these or whatever we want to do. And maybe mark here, every alternate one etc and then it's a question of joining those up Oop, can't see what i did then so yeah, joining those up so it would be like that kind of thing you could then fill that with feathers all the way around etc so it's a very good it's a very good system it's pretty straightforward once you get the idea of it um the world is your oyster as long as your world is oval the other ones that we've got Ultimate backgrounds are fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And they come in mama, papa, baby in different sizes. So there's, there's a papa of the triple lines. Here's a mama of the twisted grid. And there's a baby of the triple lines, for example. So each design comes in those three sizes and you get Things like, so there's also you get a half inch grid, which is very, very handy. Uh, so there's a twisted grid. There's the mama triple lines. There's bamboo weave, which is brilliant. I'm going to show you in a second. Triangles and diamonds. That's really cool. And triangles and diamonds. Triangles and diamonds. Clamshell. Classic clamshell. And there's also twisted grid and twisted clams. So, so in lots. the ultimate background set, you've got 20 stencils in total. So there are six different designs in three different sizes. Yeah, and, and this was just this was just me sort of playing around, really random sample. Um, sometimes I just you know I just wanted to pick it up and just kind of go, oh, how does that work? So here's the clamshells. Here's a um, the triple lines. That's um, the square, the grid. There's a grid. Uh, clamshells, triple lines, the basket, and twisted grid, etc. So just some samples there, just to give you an idea of the kind of thing that you can do. So people are doing uh, other things whilst listening to you, Liz. Marianne down okay. in London oh, yes. is, is uh, in the kitchen 
preparing lasagna. Oh, oh. Um, I do remember, Marian, when I came down to uh, do your installation, I ate at a little Italian restaurant you recommended around the corner. Oh, yes, really you good. did talk about that. Yeah, that was an excellent little place. Um, Liz and I had actually planned to go out for lunch today at the pub. In England at the moment, we're only allowed to eat outside. So uh, it we are not going. Yes, we're eating outside. We've actually cancelled that. So we'll have to think about what we're going to do for lunch. Absolutely. Today. Absolutely. I could make pasta. You could make pasta. I could make you? pasta. Yeah. Make pasta. I love making pasta. So anybody who wants to make pasta, check out on YouTube Pasta Grannies absolutely awesome so you know these sort of really elderly italian ladies who have got years and years of expert knowledge of how to make pasta and they this one girl i think i think she just wanted to go around Italy, didn't she and just sort of film these nonnas doing all this fantastic pasta and so every now and then i'll watch one of those pasta grannies check it out if you're interested in making pasta and um, the best pasta flour is either the Dove's one or the Wessex mix, isn't it? Wessex Mill. Wessex Mill or, or Dove's Farm is very, very good. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the Dove's has got a little bit of semolina in it already. Um, I think the Wessex has actually as well. But anyway, they're just really nice mixes if you're in the UK. Now, the last Cindy one is fantastic, which is the Borders one. And the borders, so many different things that you can do with the borders. And it comes with the PDF that you have to print out. And it shows you how to use things like this, high tide wave. So I've picked this one out. Um, I wonder if she's got the print. Yeah, look, there we go. Look at that. How stunning is that? Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Fabulous. It is absolutely fantastic. And it just she just goes through how to do the basic fillers, but also each one of these, she goes through how to arrange it on your quilt, what you can do with it, how to fill it in, creating the parallel lines, all that kind of thing. And I love this high tide wave. It comes in three sizes on each stencil. You get three sizes of that border. So one, two and three inch. And then you're going to free motion quilt your feathers, add some filler, etc. So very, very cool. So that's the high tide wave. Then there's low tide wave, which goes under. Dun, dun, dun. And then she shows you what you can do with that. Pearls and swirls. And you also get motifs for those centers. So say, for example, you did this one and you wanted to put a heart or a star. There's a triangle. There's also some um, clamshell ones, circles, holly, leaves. You get all of these as well. Look at that. Flower motifs. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, so actually, the, the um, conversation has gone over to pasta. By the looks of it, I, so, I, so Jenny, yes, <laughs> yes, it was pasta grannies. Pasta grannies. And that's on YouTube. And I think the videos are in Italian, but they've got English subtitles. Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Jean, yes, it would be good for practicing your Italian as well. Uh, that's certainly the case. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, very, very um, typical thing for us on a Saturday is Pete. Pete makes the most fantastic pasta sauce in a batch based on his mum's recipe. Who was Italian? Who was Italian? Absolutely. And um, what is it? Lamb, lamb shoulder and a beautiful tomato sauce. So that will be tonight's meal. So Maureen, yes, the stencils, because you were distracted by the pasta discussion, the stencils that Liz is <laughs> demonstrating this set, Liz, was? This is the borders set. This is the ultimate borders Ultimate borders. Set. So you've got low tide borders, you've got mm. diamond motifs, low tide borders. I'll just, I'll just show you each of these, because the, the, honestly, the set, it's, you look at the price of it and you kind of go, wow, that's, that's an investment. But seriously, when you see what you get in it and what you get for it, including the booklet, it's absolutely fabulous. Look, rope cable, two and three inch. And there's the one and four rope cable. Look at that tiny, lovely. There's some repetition here. You have to kind of go down and then back up and over the top and then back and then up and then back over the top. It's a bit like a feather. So that's in four sizes. In four sizes. Repetitive squares, two and four inch. And then we've got repetitive squares border in six inch. 
big one. Nice. Very nice. And then we've got the um, zigzag borders in two and five inch, but also three and four inch. So, you know, you can get them to fit the borders you've got. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Pearls and swirls. Love this one because we can put those motifs in like on the sample. I didn't do this particularly well. It's the first time I'd done it. So I was kind of learning and I just went over and over it. But that was the pink. Um, as I say, this is not... This is not my competition entry, but look how cool that looks. And that's a few years old, so hopefully I'm a bit better than that now. And this, this is the one I just, I just use that for practice, just to kind of get the lines. But I'm sure most of you will do a lot better than I did on that one. There we go. So that's our borders pack. Absolutely fantastic amount of stencils in there that you can use both with the pounce and with the fine chalk marker. I've just dropped on the floor. So let's just have a little quick markup of something here. Um, what shall we do? We could do one of the background ones on the true stitch. So how about a little clamshell? Um, actually, a grid is a good one to do, isn't it? Let me just look at which one I'm going to do. If I do... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, this one is really cool. Because look, you see that? That one there. You start off with that. So let's do that one. And hopefully I can do it. I haven't practiced this one. I like to live life on the edge, obviously. Make sure I've got some fabric in here. So what we would do, I'm just going to pounce it. Quickest way, pounce. Turn it the wrong way up so that, ooh, excess chalk everywhere. Here we go. Look at that. Then we're going to look at our reference for what we just, I just showed you there. And you can, obviously you can do these as straight lines. So you go along, along. And we've got our, um, you can either do this. So it's good to sort of track your path. In yeah, definitely. Using so that's like this, like this, like this. So this is helping me to understand how I might approach the whole thing in a logical way. So I go along there and then that one. Whoops. <laughs> Back. Try to do it quickly. Don't ever try and do it quickly. Um, that way. And then, so, you know, try and do it in a way that is going to make sense for when you stitch it out. And then we're going to go there, that way, that way, and then back. And then I'm going to do the same in the other direction. So from this direction, I would go like that one, and then I'm just, it's just catching a bit. I've already got some stitching under here. That's why it's catching. And then along here, and then that one, that one, that one, that one, and then back. So you see how it all comes together. And we just keep going. So let's do it. So this is our, now on the Capri, and I haven't so got my... I just want to talk about the stitch regulation. I am, there. yeah. So we've got the... Uh, I need to get my paddles or my sweet spots. I see this has got the 60 weight dry thread oh, here yeah. on the Capri. Yeah. It's a finer thread than the one she was using before. It doesn't show up so well on the camera, but I'm sure we'll still be able to see it. Quite bright red with everything. I chose the bright pink threads. Now this, this table is probably a little higher than I normally have it, but that's okay. That's okay. I've just got my foot pedal. Whoops. All right, let's just move that away. So, just show the sensors, Liz, for those who haven't seen that. Yeah, so here's our sensors, left and right of the needle. And what they're going to do is monitor how fast the fabric is being moved. And that enables the machine to speed up or slow down accordingly. So that's now, built into the inside. Built in, table. exactly. 
with this particular design, I don't have to do the straight lines if I don't want. Um, and I might, I might do the straight lines with um, a ruler rather than um, just kind of doing it by sight. The settings on this then are stitches per minute. So um, stitches per minute in cruise, but also obviously our stitch length we will also set. On here, I've got manual, which I, I can set as stitches per minute. So it'll just stay at that speed. Um, or I've got regulated stitch where I select how many stitches per inch. So 11 in this case, or nine or whatever I want. And it's a fine thread, so I'm gonna to go to 12. And I can either do it in precision, which means until I move the fabric, nothing is gonna sew. And in which case I'd probably have the needle up so that I can actually move the fabric. Or I have it in cruise, which means like on the Sweet 16, when I pause, it will actually keep sewing. So here I set what that is. So I can go all the way down to 50 and I can go all the way up to 1100. So half the speed, maximum speed in the machine. So don't forget that the Capri is actually a much faster machine than the Sweet 16. The Sweet 16 is 1800 stitches per minute, whereas this is 2200, 2200 stitches per minute. I've also got a play button here on the screen. So instead of using the foot pedal to activate true st uh, the insight table, I can actually press, press, easy for me to say, press play, and that will enable the machine to start up. So let's just see how we go with this. I'm gonna go in this direction so needle down, needle up. Now the way that needle down, needle work, up works on the Capri is when it's green, if I press on it, it'll do a half step. If I keep my finger on the green arrow, it'll do a slow stitch. I can flip flop between needle down and needle up by pressing the blue. Well, that means that when I stop sewing, it'll either stay with the needle down or the needle up. It's green at the bottom, so that means it'll now stop in the needle down position after I press um, if after I take my foot off the foot pedal. So I'm just going to do some securing stitches with the green. There's my three stitches, needle down, and away to go. So I'm going to go like this, like this, like this, like this. And I'm going to use the sweet spots. And I don't want to have 1100 stitches per minute. In cruise, I want 200 and I'm just going to see how that feels really. So just a question from Jackie that I'll answer here. Yeah. I've just, Jackie's asking whether the ovals are in, in the big collection. So I think she means the ultimate collection with all of Cindy's no. stencils together. Now, in fact, we put that collection together before we the ovals did. were launched. So they're not currently in that. Uh, oh, we should reprice it. Jackie, so we could do that. We, in yeah. fact, we will do that. If that's we will do that. We're interested in. Yeah. We will also include the ovals in the full yeah. collection. Um, and uh, we'll do that after the show today. Yeah, perfect. Good question, Jackie. Right, so I'm going to go this way. And try and hit that intersection. And then this way. Hit that intersection. Reveal a bit more. I, I just, I never like having it drop down below this front lip. Okay, and then, and then back. And then over to my next one. It's 12 o'clock. Yes. See, this is what happens when you start sewing. And there we go. So just keep doing that, and then I'm going to go in that direction. Yeah. How, okay. how is that? Good. I want to just keep sewing, sorry. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, Maureen, I'm glad you liked the demonstration of the Cindy stencils. Great. Yeah, Good. feel free to share it on your group. Yeah, definitely. Um, Antoinette, yes, you're asking what the situation is regarding selling into the Republic of Ireland. Well, actually, at the moment, we are shipping into Europe, but the regulations are changing again from the 1st of July, which is mm. going to make things much more difficult. So we haven't decided quite how we're going to deal with that yet, but it might be very difficult for us to ship into any EU country after the first, of, well, after the end of June. Mm. So, but at the moment, yes, you can order on our website from the EU, just like any UK customer, but with a higher shipping cost. That's right. And shipping costs have gone up a lot, unfortunately, which is going to be reflected increasingly in, in prices of, of product. Yep. Can I keep going? No. no. Interesting about what we're having for lunch. Yeah. yeah. I haven't got time to make Let's pasta now. Stuff. Right. I didn't even, but I didn't show the Sweet 16 with Stitch Regulation, but I did do a Zoom and I'm going to do some more videos. So after we finish today on this, I'm going to do either today or tomorrow, I'll do some stitching out on the Sweet 16. I'll finish that feather work showing you the Sweet 16 with the insight table. Because um, I know there's a few people that want to have a chat about upgrading their Sweet 16 to an insight table, which I think is a very, very good option. Um, I honestly do. I think it's um, either True Stitch or, you know, or Insight are great ways to go. Question. So okay. what's the offer? Oh, what's the offer? Yeah. So the offer is, the offer is, oh, should I get my paperwork? Hang on a second. So the offer is 10% off Cindy Needham stencils and off the pounds. Whoops. And, and off the Bowen chalk marker with refill. So let's just talk about what those are. Ultimate stencil, that first one I showed, um, the ultimate stencil, it's got the two acetates and the two proper stencils, um, the circle and the square is £32 normally, and it's 10% off. The ultimate shape is £18, 10% off that. Ultimate board is that one that's just chock-a-block full of stencils and loads of things that you can do with it, and the booklets, of course. £69, less 10%. Ultimate backgrounds, fantastic with all the clamshells, the twisted, the triple, all those that I showed you, 69 as well. Tons of stencils in that, mama, papa, baby. And ovals is £24, uh, less 10%. So all of those, and we'll put it together a deal where we put all of those together in an offer and you'll still get better than 10%. Fine chalk pencil and refills, um, price is now 12 50 less 10%. Pounds is... 14 pounds, pardon? I think it's 14 pounds. Yeah, we think it's 14 pounds. And that is also 10%. So that's our special offers until the 5th of June. Do take advantage of it because there are some great prices there. And um, I don't know when we'll do those again. So when so, will the offer be on the website? Well, offers on the website now. Except for that complete collection with, if yeah. you're interested in buying all of those stencils in a package we'll at a further to... discount, we've just got to add the ovals now. So yeah. another half an hour perhaps for that. But everything else is already set up to go. It might be longer than that because I've got a call scheduled at 12.15 to Graham. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so, but we will do that as soon as we can. And the other thing I wanted to say was Carly Porter is on tonight on Facebook Live. I put a post on our Facebook page to it. Carly is a fabulous quilter. She originally started on the Sweet 16. She used to work for Handy Quilter, and she's a wonderful quilt artist. Definitely check her stuff out. There's some confusion about the time, but that is 8 p.m. UK time this evening. Yeah, 8 p.m. tonight. Watch Carly. She's awesome. And also, um, we've got Angela Waters coming over, Festival of Quilts. Booking opened last Monday for the Quilters Guild folks. Tickets apparently were selling like hotcakes and uh, the rest of the anybody else can book on Monday. So do do that. We've got our classroom full of our Amaras and you can book a place on that if there are any left. There we go. And we'll also potentially, you know, well, we'll, we'll tell you more about what we're planning nearer the time. Great. I think we're there. Wow. That was a quick hour. So whatever you're eating tonight, hope you enjoy. Check out Pasta Granny's. Um, and if you do have pasta, enjoy. We'll see you next week, hopefully, but maybe not. We might be on the road. We'll give you an update later in the week. All Thanks right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>